Hey guys, okay, we are back in hospital. Um, poor Dylan is just still not feeling well. He's still been feeling really sick, um, not wanting to eat or drink anything. So we had to come back in to get more blood tests done this morning and to get more fluids into him. This time around it's been a little bit easier because I think he knew what to expect. And also I did a little bit of research on you know, blood tests and things like that. And, you know, they do offer a numbing cream um, for some children, but Dylan doesn't like cream. And he, you, know, you have to kind of wrap it in like cling film for like an hour. So that wasn't gonna work for him. Um, so the first time we did it, we was like, right, straight up, this was gonna happen. It's gonna hurt for like 10 seconds, you know, be very honest because you don't want your child to distrust you. Um, so you're better off to be like, that this was gonna happen. It's gonna hurt for like 10 seconds, then it's gonna be over. Um, but so this time I found out about a spray, like a really cold spray. So we just sprayed that on and I told funny stories and that seemed to work. He's been an absolute trooper. Um, you know, he does have the glandular fever, but I think our doctor just wants to make sure there's nothing else underlying as it's so easy to kind of just tie in all these things and just say, oh, that's glandular fever and nothing else because he's just not getting better. This obviously isn't helping his mood and how he feels. So yeah, one thing to keep in mind is when you're coming into hospital is maybe phone up ahead. So depending on, obviously if it's an accident emergency, go to the accident emergency room. As soon as you get to the front desk, tell them your child is autistic. Ask do they have like a quieter room because not only it's gonna be more distressing for them, but it's gonna be distressing for the other children in the waiting room. You know, if your child's screaming, it's not gonna help some other poor sick child. So best for everyone is to just ask if they have a room on the side where you can go it's nice and quiet don't forget to again bring the headphones and the blanket if you are you know like us coming back into hospital again instead of going through A&E we phoned up our GP and our GP phoned ahead you know explained that Dylan was autistic and we went straight into the day admissions and then we got admitted into the hospital. I also wanted to share this with you. I was handed this in the hospital. This is called my health passport for autistic people. Um, it's really great. You do personal information, um, what relationships like, but also it's, you know, uh, just basically a passport on yourself. So how you want to be spoken to, how you want to be communicated with, um, how you experience pain, what words don't you like, what causes you distress, and you can fill it in with your child or fill it in, um, fill it in yourself. They can do it for you. Cams is the people that came around and gave this to me, but yeah, I thought that was, um, I've never seen this before, so I just thought I would share that. I'm not sure if they have something like this in America or the rest of the world, but if they don't, they need it. Um, but also I was just thinking that if they don't have something like this, so if you are admitted into hospital with your child, or you are autistic and you are in hospital, it might be a good idea to write it down and hand it to them, like the nurses and the doctors, because you know then this gets basically um, sent around and put on your notes, but also anyone dealing with you will read this before they come in and yeah, they'll know what to do and what to say and what keywords to, to avoid. If you fill that in, I mean, on there, it's like your likes, your dislikes, words not to use, how they want to communicate with you, um, and I think if they shared that around the hospital with everyone who was going to see your child, that would help because so many people have come in and have used key words that have sent Dylan a bit crazy, not, not been happy with the words they've used or, you know, just the way they come in when there's too many people, you know, maybe just say that can one person come in at a time as opposed to one and four other junior doctors. I know they need to do their job and, you know, maybe ask because the first time we came in, like five people came in and they're all wearing their masks and their protective gear. And even I was a bit like, whoa, what's going on? So they're a lot more mindful this time, which really does help. It's my birthday on Friday too, so I think I could be celebrating in here. And it's difficult because we can't leave the room because of the current situation yeah. here in the UK, well, the world, the whole coronavirus thing. So we're pretty much confined to our room, but you know, it's okay, we've got endless cups of tea. I've downloaded a whole lot of movies onto my iPad. Dylan's got movies on his iPad. He's currently playing a new game. What game are you playing now, Dylan, again? What's the game called? Oh. oh, he's playing. He's playing a horror game. He loves horror games. Um, but yeah, we're doing. We're doing okay.
all things considering. They have actually got some really good uh, play therapists. I just met a speech therapist who's in here working at the moment as well. And that's been really nice to like chat to them. And yeah, coming up with lots of ideas of how to help our kiddos when they go into hospital, because I still think hospitals have a lot to learn when it comes to children with autism. You know, it's, we need to just kind of close that gap a little bit because uh, they're amazing at what they do, but you know, our children are in a league of their own and I, I think a little work needs to be done to close that gap. But you know, this is our third, second, third time being in hospital in the past six weeks. So I'm, I'm gonna be a pro at this by the time we're finished. Um, so yeah, hoping hoping that the new blood tests come back and his liver function is comes back better than it was before. Um, but yeah, that's what we've been doing this week, just hanging out. Um, my dad's birthday today. Happy birthday, daddy. And uh, yeah, like I said, my birthday on Friday. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be hanging out on the ward, doing some wheelies in the wheelchair. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not kidding. Maybe I will do that. Anyway, I'm going to be drinking lots of tea and just hanging out with my boy and yeah, Andrew's holding down the fort at home with Luca and Naya, which is great. Um, but yeah, difficult, difficult time, but we're doing okay and I'm all still thinking of all of you guys, hoping you're doing okay on lockdown with your kiddos as well. Hopefully I'll have more news to share with you next week and hopefully good news and hopefully Dylan will start to feel better and hopefully I'll start to look a bit better because this is a bit of a hot mess right now. Anyway, I will, um, yeah, I'll keep you updated on what's going on over here and I'll talk to you later. And we are, we're doing okay over here with the headphones on, watching a movie and yeah, I'm on my 25th cup of tea.